Hey, folks, welcome to the Everyday Millionaire Mindset and Matters podcast. Stephanie. Hey, hon. Hey, so we're kicking up. That that could have been a little bit more enthusiastic. Okay. Hey, hon. There you go. That was a little more enthusiastic. <laughs> Gosh, we only got started and I'm boring you already. <laughs> no. Okay. We're kicking off the new year. We're going to run the theme. The theme this year for us, and until further notice, is clarity equals velocity. And there's so much clarity that's needed in this world, at least from my perspective. As I look around, I can't help but be drawn into the global macro events, the politics, the global issues, the wars. Oh, my gosh. You know, and it's hard to be clear around any of it. So clarity equals velocity. I think it's a good theme. It's a good goal. And to stop and think through things to have that clarity. Anything you want to add to that? Well, you talk about the macro, but when I think about clarity, it's about the micro. You know, what do we need to do in our own lives? Where do we need to be complete? Where do we need to say things we need to say in the moment? Where do we have to, you know, clean up our corners and do what we need to do to have our own clarity, have our own completion so that we can quickly move into whatever's next without bumping into all the things that are in the way, the excuses, um, the distractions, the, uh, I don't know, the collection of things we don't need, uh, the thought processes that don't serve us. Um, so I think that's why this clarity equals velocity theme is, for, for me, really important. Well, when you set it as a theme, everything starts to be filtered through that theme. So I know for me, when I think about clarity equals velocity, now as I am doing business or I'm having conversations with people or I'm making decisions, I'm digging deeper into it. I'm taking time to think it through differently, even as we approach, you know, and continue to get registration for Think Tank in Calgary, March 1st, 2nd, 3rd. And yes, that is a plug to attend Think Tank. It's going to be awesome. Clarity equals velocity. And, you know, how important that is in all aspects of our life. You know, there was a comment that it seems a little vague or it seems a little esoteric when we talk about clarity equals velocity in terms of the Think Tank. But when you start to look at that term, and this isn't even the subject, by the way, that we're going to talk about today, but I think it's important, is that clarity equals velocity applies in all areas of our life, whether it be personally, professionally, uh, business-wise, career-wise, relationally, it makes a huge difference when you start to have that clarity, when you can actually be clear on what are your goals? What is the vision? What do you want your life to look like? Who do you want to be? Which is around some of the conversation we're going to have in this particular show. But I think for me into 2024, with all that's going on in the world, I just find that it really resonates. So it's our show. Clarity equals a th <laughs> clarity equals velocity. That's what it's going to be. So, on all right, let's note. do this. And I think from a you know from a business standpoint, or even personally, I think the more that we take the time to be clear and we slow down and we move through the clutter, then we can quickly move in. And I just don't want to step over the fact that sometimes when we get clear and all of a sudden the slipstream starts to show up, that velocity can be scary mm -hmm. when things start happening and, and, and uh, opportunities start going up really quickly, it can be frightening for people. And I think that's why sometimes we stay unclear or we stay cluttered because we don't actually want to be working at the pace that shows up for us. And I admit that is what maybe sounds esoteric, but the truth is, is that every time that I get super clear, and all of a sudden things start showing up and boom, we start moving forward in the direction that we want to go next without distractions. It's fun for me. It's not yeah. scary anymore. Well, things are in flow, so yeah. it works. So topic for today that kind of fits into this in terms of clarity, and that is around being your authentic self. So authenticity. And I thought it would be a great topic for you know, kicking off into 2024. We're still fresh into the new year. People are just getting back to work. Kids are going back to school. Uh, we're coming off Christmas, you know, all of the reality of the maybe the weight that was put on or the money that was spent, whatever, all the, you know, kind of we're now into the real world again of uh, going and doing our lives and all that comes with it. 
And, you know, we had amazing weather right across the country. It's just now, you know, starting to actually show up as winter with some cold weather. I think there was some snow in Alberta. I've been following the weather. And in Quebec, channel, but, Montreal, they had yeah. centimeters. So that's great. So, so much for all of the other stuff that, you know, all the rules or records that were being broke. Anyways, let's get back to talking about being your authentic self, why authenticity is important and why it is so hard to actually be authentic. You know, there's a prior, what showed up for me as you were speaking, you know, there was a, there is a quote, Gandhi said, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. And that's an old quote that he used. And I remember years ago when I first heard that, it was really big. I'm going, well, that's kind of ridiculous. You know, you're talking about the whole world. What are you talking about? Be the change you want to see in the world. And what I've come to realize over the years is that the only world that matters is the world that you are in to be the change you want to see in the world, your world. And that's what ripples out. And without getting too deep into it, how do we show up in the world to be our authentic self? And the other question is, why is it why is it important? And what are the benefits of being your authentic self? Some would listen to this and go, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I'm just who I am. Yeah, but and it says that on my mug. It says, be the change. It says that on my coffee mug. Oh, does it? It does. Yeah. But <laughs> ultimately, it, you're right. Like. What does that even mean? It's like the Wayne Dyer quotes or, you know, the Brene Brown quotes is that, you know, they, they do have meaning. And yes. when I think about the word authenticity, it can be as misunderstood as the word integrity. Mm-hmm. Because we use that word, oh, be your authentic self. I'm, my, my, I'm, I'm owning my truth. I'm my authentic self, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yet most people have different definitions of what that means. Well, let's give it a definition. Let's just kind of talk about what authenticity is. And I made some notes on it. So let me kind of go through this particular definition. This isn't the definition. It is a definition. It is actually a thought process that I kind of like. So let me just go through that and we can break it down a little bit further. So the power of authenticity refers to the strength and impact that comes from being true to oneself and expressing one's thoughts, feelings, and values. You and I talk about that a lot. Being authentic has several benefits that can lead to personal growth, stronger relationships, and greater well-being. And, you know, that's an important aspect of all of it, right? I'll go a little deeper on that particular definition. So being your authentic self generally generally refers to living in accordance with your own values. That's what you and I have talked about many, many times. Our beliefs, we talk about our BS or our belief systems and our desires rather than conforming to external expectations or what's considered societal norms, which is really difficult these days because norms seem to be being blown up. We'll save that for a conversation. It involves self-awareness, understanding your true personality, motives and feelings, and acting in a way that reflects your true self. Authenticity is about being genuine and not pretending to be someone else. It's a continuous process of self-exploration and self-expression. This concept is often emphasized in psychology and personal development as crucial for mental health and overall well-being. It implies a level of honesty with oneself and others and a willingness to show vulnerability and imperfection. Now, that last one is really quite, I don't know, it's its a pretty powerful statement, which is being honest with oneself and others and a willingness, a willingness to show vulnerability and imperfection. And that's where I think the wheels come off the car for many. Anyways, that's that's my own view of it. And I thought that was quite good. Any Anything you would comment on there? No, that's a, a good quote. I'm glad you read that because it sort of get, creates a context for it because, you know, with so much that's happened over the last three or four years is that, you know, fitting in or, or, or trying to believe in a narrative or not be disliked or fitting in or agreeing and going against your values, going with your values there really has been a disconnect. I think Mm -hmm. about how do we create a conversation like in our world and in, you know, from 
who we're being and how we're being truthful. And are we being judged for being truthful or are we in relationships that allow us to be our fully messed up selves and, you know, bump around and figure stuff out and not be perfect and be vulnerable. And I think that's really been shrouded over the last couple of years with people being forced to, you know, choose a side on, on one thing or the other when we don't really have all the information. Mm -hmm. And I think about being authentic. And I think about, you know, sometimes that word being tossed around, you know, be your authentic self, be your true self, live your truth. But if we don't have the self-awareness and we don't have an understanding of even self-acceptance, warts and all, so to speak, and loving ourselves when we're not perfect, and then still be prepared to show up fully in the world when we know, especially in, oh my gosh, in the world of social media, we're going to be judged harshly in the court of public opinion. How do you have the courage? How do you have the courage to show up for who you are fully and being your authentic self? And that's, I think, what's really important that we that we're having this conversation right now and we're bubbling around and unpacking it and trying to figure it out because truly the only place we can't be hurt truly is when we're being our authentic self. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done, particularly if you don't have an awareness around that or a commitment to it or an understanding of what that may be or perhaps means. You know, sometimes I think it's, uh, all, well, I say often it's a good question when you say, well, what is authentic and how do I know if I'm being my authentic self? I think I'm being my authentic self. That's where it takes a lot of self-reflection, re even self-examination to kind of, ex you know, think about what's kind of under the surface, if you will. And I think it's easy to fall into a trap of not being truly authentic because you're not in the right environment. Perhaps you've uh, got a big fear of judgment that's happening. Uh, there's always social pressures, you know, think about the social pressures, that, to your point, on social media that show up. And if you're authentic and you're in an environment that people maybe don't align with you, they don't like you because you've got a funny vibe, then you lose that wanting or that, you know, you have a desire for belonging. People do. And so what happens then? You start to feel ostracized and shut down or not welcome and have nothing to say then you start to see, a, I guess, a breakdown in your self-esteem, self-worth, perhaps, then fear of rejection and being oh, alone. Yes, a, a downward spiral. Yeah. So think so, about, you know, when you think about authenticity and you think about fitting in, there was a line that one of our coaches, Michael Reynolds, used to say is that, are you willing to be misunderstood? in the context of your life. Like I remember having to stand alone on a couple of different things, whether it was gossip or whether it was a, a value stand that I would be willing to take. And, and you've had this experience as well, where there's just a place where I can't lie or I can't, I can no longer tolerate putting myself in situations where I'm not being true to myself. And I think mm -hmm. that's where authenticity lives is that if you're not being true to yourself in a situation and you keep going over and over again, trying to fit in, trying to think of the corporate world where you're being judged on certain things and you're having to put yourself outside of your core values on so many different levels to get the deal done. For example, there's just a level, I think going in for me into this, new year and this new decade into this new dimension is that how do you live? How do I live truly my authentic self and be prepared to be rejected? And I think that's one of the biggest fears is that not just being misunderstood, but being rejected. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, when it comes to being brave enough to go through the process, the self-discovery of being true to yourself, of, discovering what your values are. And that's not easy. Uh, we do that as coaches. We're helping people discover their values. It's a, it's, it's hard work for people often, 
which is, I don't even know what my values are anymore. Are they my values? Are they my parents' values? I don't even know what they are. Are they morals? You know, they, there's a lot of confusion around it. So how can you be authentic when you don't really understand even what your top values are? What are your highest and your core values? There's a couple things around all of it that when it comes to, and for us, you know, we're, I mean, we're in the public a lot. We put ourselves out there, whether it be in this podcast or on stage, we're often on camera doing something. And there comes to a point where you have to not care. And it's not that. No, we, no, it's not that you don't care. Mm. It's that you can't care. You can't care. You do yeah. care because, of course, we're humans and we want to deliver. Yeah, we want value. We want to provide we want value. value. But we also, you know, there's still a place where when I'm on stage, I want to be accepted and liked. But there's when I have a message that I think is more important than me being liked, I can't mm. care. It's not like mm. I don't care. We can't care. 100%. And I think that's where you have to, or we've had to get to a point for us, and we can speak for us. I know years ago, when I first started speaking, when I first started getting on stage many, many years ago, there was a way that I wanted to be on stage, the way I wanted to be seen. And there's a lot of internal dialogue about and concern about what people might be thinking about my message or how I present or whatever that might be. And certainly over the years, I've come to discover that it doesn't matter. I'm going to do the best I can. I always operate from a place whenever I'm speaking, whether it be this podcast or on stage or in a webinar or whatever it might be, you know, I come from a place of how am I going to present? The question I always ask myself is what do I want people to do after hearing me speak that they wouldn't have done before hearing me speak? And that way, I'm always making the conversation about the audience or the person I'm speaking with. And for me, that's a way of being that however I get that message, I'm going to do it the best way I know how. I'm going to be true to who I am in delivering that message. I'm going to be as truthful as I can in delivering is like what resonates for me. And People are going to align with that and then hang out. And then there's going to be those that go, I think he's nuts or whatever the story is. Right. And interesting that this many years later, when we think about the relationships we have in our life, the people that we have in our life, we love those people in our life. And that's primarily because as we've, come to be as authentic as we know how to be, you know, like, as because we're, we're always on the journey, right, of self-discovery and learning that next layer of us, uh, we attract great people. So I don't know where I'm going with all that, but that's, well, I think, I think you know, it comes you, from being authentic. You, you bring up a good point. So when you're being authentic and you're just having a, maybe you're having a shitty day and you're allowed to have a shitty day or things aren't working out and you still have the people around you that are saying, you know what, you're just having a crappy day. Um, you're still the same person. You still have the same values. You still are, you know, committed to what, what it is that you're doing and you're allowed to have a crappy day, Yeah. you know, and there's, you know, times in the last couple of years where, you know, I haven't got out of my pajamas, you know, for a whole day, or I mean, I, I, I don't if I have clients and I put myself in business mode and I honestly, you know, I never go on camera or if I'm having a Zoom meeting in my pajamas, so to speak. But, you know, I think you know that I go upstairs, I get dressed, I put lipstick on, I, you know, I will always put myself. But there's been times where it's been difficult and I've had to honor myself through some maybe i don't know what i don't want to call it depression or sadness or whatever since my mom died and since the pandemic kicked in and so many things have changed but when you think about what's my message and who i want to be and who you want to be and who we want to be together is that we have to keep that standard strong for ourselves we have to be vulnerable but we also have to commit to who we're being and what we want to share and how we want to show up and what we want people to do and be after they are experiencing our work. But at the same time, I don't ever want to pretend that I'm perfect. I don't ever want to pretend that I'm not sometimes sad or I'm not sometimes 
devastated because something has kicked my ass. Do I bring that to the meetings? No, because I know I have to climb on top of it. I know I have to be a professional and I know I'm the best in the world at what I do. So I bring that forward. But at the same time, I don't ever want to create the illusion that what I'm doing or what life is happening to us. I mean, as buff as you look and as great as you look right now, you're working your ass off to make yeah. sure that, you know, we're still doing what we're doing and having the life that we have. So I don't want to create the illusion that we know what we're doing is right, but it's yeah. going to be real. It's going to be vulnerable, <laughs> it's going to be truthful. And again, it's going to be authentic. We're mere mortals. You know, there's, um, <laughs> we're mere mortals. Always remember that. So there's some, you know, some might be listening or some, when we have these conversations, it sounds, it lands as a little bit like who gives a shit or what are you talking about? So there's another, there's another quote. So there's a lot of power in authenticity and there's a way of being when you're living an authentic life. And, you know, certainly within all of that, what's cool about really being authentic and understanding who you are is that you start to create some really genuine connections because you're having far more, I wouldn't say far more, but deeper and more meaningful connections with people because you're having different conversations. You're below the surface of how's the weather today. You can get a little bit deeper into conversations. You actually are curious and you want to know how somebody's doing really, you know, what's going on for them really, because you feel safe in having those kinds of conversations and sharing that kind of information so that you can be expressed and feel that you've got some level of self-acceptance within you as well. So that when you have these conversations, you say it out loud, first off, somebody might, somebody that you are in a great relationship with because of who you are, that also helps you increase your own self-acceptance as well. So the relationships get better and better quality. I think emotionally, we're not carrying any weight of feeling judged. And even if we feel judged, we can let it go. We don't hang on to it. And I think it's just always about the process of personal growth. Now, just before I pass the puck back to you, there's a quote that we like that I think it has to be said is that in this whole conversation about authenticity, there's the question of, well, who am I? And this quote is really funny and we've tried it before, but I actually put it out in front of me this time, which is, I'm not who you think I am. I'm not even who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. And that is often the problem with trying to get to authenticity. So thoughts. Well, you know, segue to that quote is why is it important that who I think I am matters? Because ultimately we're going to be judged by the filters of other people, whether it's through experiences, um, you know, early conditioning, social comparisons, perfectionism, past traumas, whatever that is, people are going to be judging us or you or me through their own vision, through their own filters. Mm -hmm. And I think that it takes more courage to be authentic when you know you're going to be judged through other people's filters. Mm -hmm. And then what that leads to is rejection. And I think as human beings, that's one of our biggest fears, right? Is isolation and rejection. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're going to be fully who we are, I'd, you know, my line is I'd rather be rejected or disliked for who I am than loved for who I'm not. Yeah, but I think that's, and I don't, I agree with that, by the way, but. It's lonely. It can be super lonely. lonely. Exactly. I actually just posted something on Instagram that showed, you know, friends I had in my 20s, in my 30s, and then in my 40s. And it's this downward, you know, and then <laughs> as you get older, you've got your pets. And I just posted that on my Instagram. So go see it at P. Francie. It's uh, really, really good because, you know, you start out, you, you know the world and you're really social when you're young. And then as you get older, it kind of digresses into, you know, the joke is, is now it's just me and the dogs, you know, Stephanie. And me. <laughs> yes. And so it is funny how that that goes on. But the 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 thing about being true to yourself, being authentic, it doesn't mean that you're 
you know, waving some flag and you've got all this bravado and you're making big, bold statements. It's just, can you be, you know, your real natural self? I think the challenge that most get into, and we've all been through it, where we have that fear of rejection, you know, what if they don't like us the way we are? And then there's another side of that where we get out of whack a little bit, I think, is the social expectations. We get into we get into different circumstances where we may not align with the group or the people that are in that particular space, yet we have an expectation of how we would show up. And those are difficult circumstances to find ourselves in. What do you do with that? Well, you leave early. You're not too curious or you get really curious. I don't know how to handle that one. You know, the best way often we'd leave if you can. And then there's always the feeling of peer pressure. So, yeah, that's what I got to say about that. Yeah, I get that. And I think what's really interesting about that is that, you know, you bring up who I was in the 20s and my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, my 50s, you know, is that am I hanging on to a persona in my 20s that doesn't serve me in my 40s? Like, mm. Am I still hanging on with the same girlfriends and the same people and, you know, demanding of myself that I'm giving them the persona that makes them comfortable to make sure we're still able to hang out? You know, we've, we've experienced it a couple of times now with people that we know that we don't know them in their other social circles. Like we try to, and maybe that's why we don't get invited to certain things is because, you know, we've always been very, I don't know, um, committed to being the same. We're the same on holiday, on vacation, as we are in business or in our entrepreneur experiences. I want to be the same person so people can be expecting consistency. And that's what I think about authenticity is that am I consistent in all areas? And what I've experienced over the last couple of years um, with certain people that I thought I knew is that I would show up in other situations, whether it's social or business in their life, and I didn't recognize them. Mm. Or they didn't, rec- or they were somebody else and were, were, were minimizing who they were in my life, or they were embellishing who they were in my life versus who they were in their quote unquote real life. And I think that's really, really hard when you're trying to maintain or hold four or five or even two different personas so that you are a certain way at work and I'm a certain way at home and you don't really know me socially and you don't really know me personally. Like, how do you maintain all of those different personas? And I think from an authenticity standpoint is that I don't know if that's a conditioning thing or if it's a a lack of self-awareness, but I would rather create an environment around myself that people get to be themselves. Because if I run into somebody at a restaurant or at a party and they're being something completely different than who I know them as, then that's on them. That's really awkward. And to me, that's where the authenticity conversation gets important. It's a big conversation. And I think for many, it can be quite confusing. And I know even for myself, the observation, when you look at the divisity, the divisiveness and the polarity that's happening in the world today, you know, there is the woke, there is the awake, there's something somewhere in between all of that. There's those individuals that need to take take a stand and you know, they are their authentic self and their truth is X, Y, Z. And then there's the other side of that equation, which is, no, you're wrong. My truth is, is that it's, you know, QRS. The point is, is that polarity, that divisiveness, that woke, that awake, that in between, some are taking a stand and being very vocal about it. That's, I guess, is being authentic. But there are the social pressures that come into all of this. There is the peer pressures. There is the reality of the morality of society, I think, overall is changing. And I don't know who it was I was listening to said something that was really interesting, which was his conversation could have been Patrick Bet David, who was making the comment that he wants to be the leader of leaders. That's always been his goal. You know, he's now 40 some years old, but it's been that way for most of his life. It all came from an incident with his dad and something that happened. And anyways, that aside, he goes, the only thing I fear today, 
the only thing I fear is falling out of favor with God. Mm. And in his world, when he looks at North America, when he looks at the Americas, it's like nobody has that fear anymore. Nobody mm-hmm. has the fear when, and when you refer to the U.S., you know, in in the world of, and it could be Canada, the same thing. You know, there in God we trust is you know an often used phrase, and in that there was always morality and social norms built around a lot of that. And his point was, we've lost the fear of falling out of favor with God. And I went, you know, that's a really profound statement. And it's not, to me, by the way, that's not about religious or Christianity, although he is a Christian. But I went, yeah, there's something there that uh, needs to be (laughs) kind of considered I thought it was just really, you know, in the divisiveness when we talk about being authentic and what side of the line and how do we take a stand and how do we show up and what is our message? It gets pretty deep and it can be, get, I think, very confusing, quite frightening, unless you you have to have very thick skin and be really clear in order to make those kind of statements and those kind and take those kind of stands. So I know that's a little bit off on a tangent. Any thoughts? Wow. Um, well, I'm reading the book or listening to the book right now too. Um, choose your enemies wisely with mm. Patrick at David. And I think what really has hit me is that it's true is that if we don't have a, a, a North star or a guiding light in his world, he's Christian. So it's, you know, how do you fall in or out of favor with God? It is a moral and ethical decision on some of the things that you're doing that you elevate yourself to make sure that you're checking in with yourself and your values to, and not being um, misusing your your power, misusing your values or manipulating situations. And I get that. And I think that's where the authenticity conversation can land for me is that I don't know how to not be myself anymore. And maybe I'll never be a multi-bazillionaire. Maybe I'll never be super famous you know what, I don't really care. What I do care is that I'm consistent and reliable and trustworthy with the people that trust me. And to me, that's authenticity. And maybe there's a a God piece in there. Um, Sadly, I think we've lost, you know, in some ways in North America, we've lost our ground with, you know, that we're allowing children to you know, change their gender and at 12 years old. And like, I think we're losing, we're losing our North star. And I think it's giving some of the other countries in the world kind of hope, you know, that, you know, North America is, you know, not going to be their authentic self. They're not going to be grounded in their values and what they believe in and what they're going to fight for. And, and that, and that to me is really sad But at the same time, I think it starts with us. It starts with me as an individual. It starts with you as an individual that if we're going to take our own stance and we're going to be willing to be misunderstood and we're going to maybe not, you know, fight with, you know, pitchforks and and rifles, but we're going to fight for what it is that we believe in and we're going to stand for that, then we're going to attract people in our world and in our programs and in our coaching uh, environments and in our communities that that want to really truly commit to an authentic and values-based life. And whether that includes God, religion, whatever that is, I believe that we're at a precipice right now is that we need to create a space of authenticity, of non-perfection. We don't have to be perfect, but we do need to be authentic and we do need to be real. And we have to understand that if we don't, then we're going to get mowed over by the woke left or by the people who just are going to, you know, take our world down a path that isn't going to be healthy. And it's not going to be, um, we're not going to do a great job moving forward. So. I appreciate the fact that you brought that up and I, I, you know, invite anybody to, to download or buy that book. 
by Patrick Bet David. It, it really is um, quite enlightening. Yeah, it's very cool. Wisely. You know, and sometimes I guess the enemy that we have is within ourselves. You know, I just know that the more authentic I can be and the more I can, more true I can be to myself, the less concern I have of carrying the weight or the nervousness or the anxiety or whatever that might be. Because to your point, I can't care. And it's not that I don't care. But when I show up, I'm going to always be the best man. I know how to be the best dad, the best husband, the best friend, the best leader. And those are challenging. I guess that can be very challenging. You get tested. And is that commitment so strong to being that way and to stepping up and actually intentionally uh, defining how you want who how I want to show up as a man, as a leader. So authenticity is intentional. We do our best to be true to ourselves. And sometimes we first have to discover who that is, what we're capable of. And in all of that, the one thing we can't step over is that it all takes courage. It takes <laughs> being courageous. It takes self-reflection and contemplation probably even a little meditation to come to those answers and to align with yourself first. So in the world of clarity equals velocity, the clearer we are about who we are, who we intend to be, who we want to set ourselves up to be uh, really increases velocity in life. So I think we can leave on that note. I think unless you've got something else you want to add. No, I don't think so. I think the last thing is is the fear of being judged. Is that I think that that runs a lot of people. And what if for the next little while, if you're listening, if you if you made it this far, is what if you're not afraid of being judged? What if what if you just are who you are? You surrender and you just soften into your truth <laughs> at the end of the day it doesn't matter you're judged one way or the other so it exactly. really doesn't matter so you may as well show up and be true to yourself stephanie thanks for doing this not sure that was fun but that was, that fun. was fun okay mm -hmm.